There we go. <laughs> is it happening? It is. Okay. Hello, Meat Smiths. We're here again. Um, this is going to be a run through of our Mangalitsa pork share. And we're really excited to do this mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. We wanted to show you, I guess, both the quality and the quantity of what one of these shares looks like. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to run through that as quickly as we can. We're hoping this won't turn into too long uh, of a demonstration, but who knows? We kind of have fun together doing this. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are occupied. So, um, yeah. And before we start, I wanted to... This is actually using the first round of the mangalitsas that we got, which weighed in at over 300 pounds hanging weight. So that's the share that we split. That that's we split the weight we split into two right. shares. But they were they were beasts. Yeah. They were huge. They were beautiful. Um, and so each share, each share is representative of about 150, 160 pounds worth of meat, mm -hmm. worth of just hanging carcass weight. Um, so that's what this looks like. In the future, you know, if you're watching this, uh, this we're recording this spring of 2008. We're hoping to do this more often. 2018. Eight, 18, right, right. <laughs> um, that uh, we're, you know, the share might be slightly less or slightly more. Um, so keep that in mind as we show you the quantities here. But we're, we'll just dive in, I guess. Yeah. We'll show you what a share looks like. We have the list up and we're just going to go through it of what is involved in a share. And we wanted to do it because uh, of the burden of abundance. Uh, we butcher these mangalitas so as not to trim anything because um, they're lard pigs. And the point is not to fit them uh, through a square hole being a round peg. And uh, to turn all the fat into trim, for example, would be to do that. The yield of these pigs is fat. So, we made fatty things. You can see them behind me. We've kind of got them laid out here. And just remember, the thing about this fat is it is not tongue-curlingly rich. It is mild. So, when in doubt, just eat it. And it is... It is extraordinarily edible. It's it's really mild. So, you I'm gonna what? give yeah. us a little quick primer mm. um, on on what the fat is primarily consists of and why it is so special. Okay, with, having to do with the diet. We've yeah. talked about it in other places, but yeah, this is a quick just recap. really quick. It's it's actually helpful to think of it less like animal fat that you've had before. It's really totally different. Like it's not even in the same category of animal fat that you have consumed previous to your mangalitsa share. It is more like olive oil. Literally, it has more monounsaturated fat in it uh, than even, even compared to other really healthy pigs. And that's just because of the unique genetic um, faculties of the mangalitsa pig. It is genetically prone to deposit unsaturated, monounsaturated, which is to say oily, mild fat. And when you pair that with a diet that is high in nuts, what you get is lots of really mild, oily fat. Um, so you actually taste hazelnut in these pigs, not because I've seasoned them with hazelnut or because you're going to season them with hazelnuts when you cook them or anything like that, but because they've consumed hazelnuts. And so you taste hazelnuts. Acorns. And the thing you're tasting is the oil of hazelnuts. Mm -hmm. Literally, the monounsaturated oils of hazelnuts. That's what these mangas have. And then they even, you couple that with the tannins in their fat, which they acquire by living in a forest and by eating acorns. And that means that their fat doesn't become bitter, which is an experience that you have had with most of the pig fat you've ever consumed, unfortunately. Most pigs are fed a diet high in soy as the primary protein source, and soy is also oily, but it is a bitter oil. It's not a tasty oil. So that's what makes these pigs distinct, is they are oily, but it is a sweet, mild oil. Like the first time I tried the fat, just raw, uncured completely, it, it, I thought immediately of almonds. It tastes like almonds. So it is really mild, and so there might be a little hurdle to get over in your mind in actually 
you ha might have to actually try to acquire the taste and get over the fat phobia, which is understandable because most fat isn't well, good. And it's just not. It's not a taste hurdle. It's, more, if anything, more of a texture hurdle. Maybe textural. Hurdle. Yeah, yeah. Know. Definitely. And I would even say that this fat is different in texture. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. It's oily and shiny. Like, uh, you know, I touch it and my hands are oily. They're shiny because there's more oil, un monounsaturated fat. It is more like olive oil than like any other pig fat you've ever had. It's pretty special. Great. So to that end. Let's dive in. <laughs> Mangalitsas <laughs> have this much back fat, okay? At least. And this much, we don't have a scale on the screen, means three to four inches. And I didn't trim any of it. So we turned it all into things like this. This here is a solid piece of mega back fat that has been salted and peppered. It's been cured. It's cured. It's good until the end of the cosmos. And in your share, yours are um, in nice squares, not funky triangles like this. Um, yours are much uh, more shapely. But basically, the first way that you should eat this is just to get a slice. And it could be thin or, or thick. This is like lardo, is what it's like. This is probably the most akin to lardo of anything in the share. And just try it on its own like this. This is the most mild manifestation of fat on this pig. Not chewy, it's soft. Because it is oily, it's more monounsaturated, it has a low melting point. So just the warmth of your touch of your hands, my hands are already oily, of your mouth begins to melt the fat. Wow, okay, I take it back. There's no texture hurdle. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't been eating it like you have right. as you've been processing it. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I put that in my mouth. And just I thought, dissolves. I thought, I thought of silk. It's like yeah. silk in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. It's just... Oh, it's incredible, it's, isn't it? Amazing. Never had yeah. fat like that. Yeah. I'm going to turn the sauce <laughs> off really quick. We have sauce. Oh, off. yeah. You might be hearing the bubbles in the background. We're, we're, we're trying it out fresh for you guys. That was really amazing. Yeah. This is this is unscripted, too. I know. <laughs> you're, I'm kind of your guinea pig because I haven't been like, you know, stealing yeah. bites every now and again. So. Mm. so take this out of your freezer, unwrap it. Or you won't be able to unwrap it. It's frozen. Just put it in your fridge to thaw out overnight, at least, nice and slow. And then unwrap it, and um, you could just slice it like this. You could slice a whole bunch of little ones and set it out as an appetizer plate or as part of a charcuterie board. You forgot the whiskey. I know. We're, we're getting there. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, Sorry. And, and you could even uh, put it on something warm. Like if you fried up a little bread and slice it thin and put it on the bread, it would just immediately start to melt into the bread. Mm. and be really wonderful um, even that when in doubt all of this could be your cooking medium and this goes for just about everything we're going to go through here is cut off a thickish piece cube it up and render it in a pan mm -hmm. just put it in your skillet little chunks little cubes diced and that's the beginning of everything you could sweat onions in it you could fry an egg in it you can braise your kale in it whatever so that goes for just about all of this and you're going to want to use this fat as that medium so one thing I think of too, yeah. when it comes to this and many other of these items, um, if you're going to a party, like a holiday party or something, take this instead of going to pick up, you know, cheese dip or chips or whatever, yeah. like this is great party food. Yeah. It's a great talking conversation mm -hmm. piece. Bring a sharp knife, just cut it off for people. And it's, it's, it's a great uh, thing to, to pull out for yeah. other people to enjoy and People sure. love it. A party is actually a really good place for that because people are in the mood. Right. They, wanna, <laughs> they want to experiment yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And that, that does actually really help. You'll find yourself stuck behind the cutting board with a knife the whole time. So do, be duly warned because that happens to me all the time when I take You're prosciutto You're playing host stuff. or hostess for yeah. a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's one manifestation. The other lipid manifestation of solid fat is this here. And this is kind of a cue that I took from a Polish recipe, and I don't know how to say it, but I'm going to pretend to say it. It's paprikowana suonina, and it is, again, another like lardo thing. It's solid back fat that has been cured, but this one has been smothered in sweet, smoky paprika, and then smoked. So this is, is punchy. This is a punchy one. And this is the one that 
again, you could th slice it thin or thick. It's so mild, it's so forgiving that it's not gonna be too chewy for you. Slice all the way down to the skin. See, and then we have, and I'm getting my paprika fingerprints all over it. <laughs> and this one is really, this is really special. And I think one good thing to do with it is to get a nice loaf of bread. This is Lauren's famous <laughs> bread that we eat here. And you could even warm this bread if you want or, or toast it. Cut it in thin little slices. And this is just one way to do this. I mean, really what they, what they do in Hungary, for example, is you cut off a nice square of this, a thickest chunk. And, um, and then you, well, you can almost do it. You create something they call uh, soldiers, soldiers. Which is this. You actually do thickest chunks down this wise. I'll show you what I'm talking <laughs> about here. And then you do little soldiers down. Little cross cuts. This wise. So what we have is a bunch of fingers or soldiers all in a row. So let's see, look at this. <laughs> it's all it's a bunch of little fingers that's cute yeah you could actually bread this and deep fry this if you uh -huh. wanted to <laughs> um it'd be call it it would look like calamari but taste infinitely better oh, wow. um so little soldiers like this and you they, you could stick this on the end of you know a marshmallow roasting stick and they heat it over the fire and then they catch the dripping fat in their bread and then eventually this gets nice and fried and you, you put bits of it on the bread with raw onion and um, pickled vegetables and this dirty bread. Mm. Um, you can also, you know, you can cut the fat into little fingers like this and maybe just give yourself one row of it and put that in a skillet to fry. And it's got skin on it, so the skin will eventually crisp and that will render out. And then you can just crack an egg in that. And everyone gets an egg with like a little hand of fat, fingers of fat in there. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's one way. I got some garlic here because this paprika fat is kind of about strong flavors here. It's really good. The smoke really comes through it through. And especially if you toast the bread, you can, even fresh bread like this with good punchy garlic, you can just rub garlic on the bread. Kind of like, like this. See that? <laughs> and then you put the paprika rubbed salona on it and then it's kind of nice to have whiskey um, this is actually part of the recipe is some liquor of some kind or wine and it really helps because it is you know it's rich and this is uh this cuts the fat a little bit it facilitates the consumption of more fat <laughs> Really, it does. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, man. Hi, John Luke. Mom. Mm. Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> Mom, can you finish that first one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> camera hog. Mm, oh man. Wow, this is good. And this is a sour loaf. It's a, it's a leavened bread. Oh my gosh, the fat is so oily. It's like coming out of my mouth, but it's a leavened bread. So it's got that slight mild sourness to it. This is so delicious. That counters perfectly with the richness of the fat. And so Russians, the Russians have a version of this that you've heard me talk about too many times. It's called salo. And they do it, you do it with, you know, wild fermented, sour, 100% rye flour bread and vodka. And, uh, mm. wow, it's such a simple combination. See, this is the thing I've been trying to say is that when the ingredients are of this quality, and all this is, this is, you know, a bread that Lauren makes with organic, um, whole wheat flour and white flour. I think it's kind of a half and half thing. I'm not going to pretend to tell you how to make it, but it's because I don't know. It's really simple. 
Um, it is a no need bread that she makes and then some cured back fat. Just that. That's actually not boring. I, I don't know how else to tell you without giving you a piece to taste, but when the ingredients are of this quali quality, they can be of lesser quantity. They can be very few and it will just be um, totally sufficient. It's a whole meal. Like you can take this to uh, work for your lunch and, and it will be sufficient. I know I do it sometimes. And um, when the when the quality is this high, the flavor, it, the food is effortlessly delicious. It takes less preparation from you, less coaxing. You don't have to add a bunch of ingredients. It's all there. And when it is fat of this quality, it is also very gratifying and satisfying. You, you eat less. Cheers. Mm. So, oh wow, that's perfect. With that, that's the paprika lardo, or the Hungarians call it salona. Your packages will say salona, because these are Hungarian pigs. They're mangalitsas from Hungary. Um, all right. That's the back fat. You will also receive some of these. This is uncured. This is a strip of back fat, uncured. Some of you have, um, you'll just have a cube of back fat that you can cut into little strips. It's really hard, it's, or easy. It's really easy. Um, it's dense enough to carve with a knife. It's really easy. And you'll have strips like this, and you will be receiving one of these contraptions. Brand new. <laughs> yeah, this is a needle with a jaw at the end. You see? And it's sharp at the tip. And the point of this is to grip the fat in the jaw. I've never done this before. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have, actually, I do. I have done it with the other one, but. Our meat never needs larding, but you get to do this really awesome thing, which is called larding. And this is called a lardon. I don't actually know how to say that I mean, either. This but is. Yeah, the yeah. strip is called a lardon. This is a larding needle. And the point is to sew this like thread into all the things, specifically lean meat. So the prime um, uh, meat to do this with is anything from the thigh of any quadruped. So anything that is labeled round from a beef cow needs this right here mm -hmm. because that is lean and tough, which means it is prone to dryness and chewiness if you roast it, as you all know. If you want to combat the dryness and the chewiness with moisture, which will also help break it down, then you sew it with a whole bunch of these little guys and you'll have a whole bunch of them. And the way you do it is lacking a lean piece of meat. I'm going to use the bread. You just shove it through like this. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And it will, it'll actually work with a piece of meat because <laughs> it'll should. hold the jaws closed. Yeah. Ooh, almost, almost got it. But you get the idea. You started it. Yeah, started it. The meat will kind of provide the yeah, pressure to it keep pre it closed. It, the bread is too fluffy, but eh, see, went in there a little bit. Like a little worm. That's larding, and that's what that is for. <laughs> I completely failed prop. But um, so that's that's the other manifestation of back uh -huh. fat. You have a fourth. So we have four. I don't know. You have another manifestation of back fat, and it's gonna look like this. And I'm gonna get my greasy fingerprints all over this person's package. It says seasoned back fat spread. This was kind of like a throw in because we didn't advertise for that at all, but right. it was like, we need to come up with something else. So because there's so much back. Yeah, it, it's kind of a so treat. I don't know. If, can, can you see it? Yes, you can right here. That's mm -hmm. what this is. So you take that package out of your fridge freezer and let it thaw again, you know, at least overnight in your fridge, nice and slow, unwrap it, put it in a bowl and you're going to have to get your hands dirty. Messy, greasy, soft, oily, smooth. It's smooth. And you just need to... Moisturize. Yeah, moisturize. You just need to mix it. And just the warmth of your hands is going to make it spreadable. It's going to come out kind of hard. But not that hard. I mean, it's really amazing stuff. So you just need to work it for a while. And you're going to get completely oily hands. Rinse off your hands. And then it is... 
to call it, I, I wish we had a better word. We say spread, you know, you could call it dip. dip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a low culture word for that. Mom, I want some dip. Um, <laughs> but this stuff is, it's incredible. And oh, I didn't finish eating this. Yeah. This is really good, by the way. It's really good. So Triscuits would be kind of awesome for this. Um, and Or bread. And it is so delicious. It's back fat that has been ground, then salted, and lightly seasoned. And then I mixed it in a huge bus tub until my arms fell off. Wrapped it, labeled it, and froze it for you to take out. Remix to make it smooth again and spreadable and then you just spread it on all the things so this is another great part of a charcuterie board mm. i mean this is anything from mm. just your daily lunch mm -hmm. i mean it provides the nutrients for a quick if you just need to grab something and go yeah or it's really decadent and <laughs> extravagant and it could serve on a beautiful little holiday tray, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and um, yeah, it's all multi purpose in that way. It is so good, and it is deceptively simple, but like it's that with some bread is a whole meal. I was saying this when you were gone, yeah, but it's effortlessly delicious. Mm -hmm. You don't need to coax it with a multiplicity of ingredients, like this is a mm -hmm. full meal. You can and... put a little parsley on top, and oh, great idea, call it. Call mm -hmm. it good for your midday meal. Yeah, it's so good. And I think the first batch, I put a little bit of uh, red sweet pepper. So not paprika. It wasn't smoked. Uh, and that made it taste almost exactly like cultured raw butter. Yeah. And so you could just pretend it's butter. Yeah. It has a very similar texture to butter. Mm -hmm. And a very similar fat distribution, actually. It's really interesting. Like, it kind of mm -hmm. stays solid at room temperature, and you hold it, it'll melt on you. You know, and just by the more, uh, temperature of your hands. So, pretend it's butter. Yeah. When in doubt. Yeah. That's the meat spread. Let me show... Or fat spread. Did you show quantities yet? I showed the just the one package of fat spread so far. Okay. And then, of the back fat... Oh, yeah. So, of this... We're getting roughly... I think it's about four of those. This quantity... Yeah. 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 So I mean, four of those, and so, then, yeah. and then one of these that will probably be in half, just for convenience. Yeah. In terms of sizing, and. Um, and that's all like the pure fat. Yeah. Things. And we'll. I'm gonna. I'm gonna slice all your bacon for you. Which is right here. Smoked. This is actually. <clears throat> An uncommon cut that is not usually used for bacon. This is what chops would be. And you will notice there are no chops in this share. Because chops are um, not suited to the mangalitsa pig. Maybe. But uh, I think it is best used as back bacon. And so you actually you have a huge amount of bacon. You have this times one, two, three, four times four, basically. So some, and it's all gonna be sliced for you. This is half. Yeah. Oh no. Two, so two of these. This is a quarter of the back bacon. Of the back. One, two, three. For one share or for one pig? One share. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you have a lot of bacon. <laughs> uh, and it's smoked with alder wood from Vashon here. And I took each rib out to maximize the meat yield on your bacon, because you can tell we do have quite a bit of the wonderful fat on it. And uh, the trick about, and this is all going to be sliced for you, by the way, pre-sliced and, and wrapped and everything. Uh, the trick with this bacon, and I would say with all real bacon in the cosmos, is uh, please don't overcook it. Mm. Um, especially with this fat, you are going to, you'll still be able to achieve crispiness, the delightful crispiness of bacon, particularly with this lean bit of meat right here, which would be the pork chop. Yeah, that's right. That is how much meat would be on the pork chop of a mangalitsa, and that's how much fat would be on a pork chop. <laughs> so you can tell, not for pork chops. No. This is for bacon. Um, and so you could get some crisposity there, but 
with this fat, again, it's think, pretend like it's olive oil suspended in uh, the physiology of porcine fat. And the thing with olive oil is you don't want to overcook it. You don't want to smoke your olive oil. And so when you're frying this for breakfast or for all the meals of the day, which I recommend, uh, then you want to air on the side of like even totally raw. Yeah. And I'm saying this yeah. because I, this is, I live it. This is the bacon we eat all the time. Like, uh, like all the time, actually. Uh, every morning, pretty much. Pretty much every single morning. And in the winter, when our garden is nothing, there's nothing going on, mm -hmm. we basically serve bacon with bacon every day, all day. Like, <laughs> truly, we eat so much, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot. Mm -hmm. That by the time spring comes around, we're like, okay, uh, dear God, please, greens or something. <laughs> uh, so this is coming from the place of, like, how to eat bacon in the long term and enjoy it mm -hmm. and it is don't blacken it don't overdo it don't overcook yeah. it so you know when you your bacon curls and stuff and you have those bits that are completely raw that's good fine mm -hmm. you will love it mm -hmm. and particularly you will love that is how you need to cook this bacon from this kind of pig fed this kind of diet yeah um and i would i would suggest yeah. um i mean even my the way that i've cooked bacon is evolving as we're yeah. growing into more of this kind of food. Um, you know, I don't just, I used to, put a slab of bacon on, turn the heat up high, and then walk away and go do a chore. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. know. I used to be confessing here. But now you got to stand there a little bit and nurse it, kind of fuss with it, kind of... And I've heard other, other butchers talk about this too, like, Move your bacon around. Let it dance in there a little bit. Don't just let it stick to it and then get all black on one edge. Yeah. Just kind of play with it a little bit. And yeah. It'll, that's the way to cook bacon. Push Slow, it around. A little bit slower. A little yeah. bit slower. Um, and I realize there also is a phobia around eating raw pork. And mm -hmm. heretofore, we have only given you recipes for eating raw pork. Yeah. Uh, well, and, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, the reason we are not afraid of this is not because we are brazen morons, but because uh, we know. Well, that's actually <laughs> we, we still up be. for debate. <laughs> but because not with this anymore. Hopefully. Not with this. Yeah, no. Other things, maybe. No, because I know the pathology of trichinosis. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. A few intelligent words in a row. Um, <laughs> the the trichina worm. If it, is, if, if it is in the pig, it's only in the lean flesh, not the fat. And a pig can only get the trichina worm if it has consumed the raw trichina infected flesh, lean flesh, of a dead animal. Because live animals don't just give up their flesh for consumption. So like a pig would have, a deer would have to jump into the pig's pat. This is... Like my imagination trying to conceive how these pigs could have trichinosis. Deer would have to jump into their fence, die, and then they would have to rip through the hide and can start eating the flesh mm -hmm. after the flesh had been contaminated with trichinosis. That's the only way I can fathom this happening. Um, and even if the deer were to choose the pig paddock as its graveyard, the p pigs are too smart to work for their food. They get fed every day and they're just not going to go through it as a pig farmer i can tell you that's usually the way they go so mm. anyway all that to say don't worry about eating this raw um and particularly when it comes to your bacon and i really just don't want you to overcook it and so this is something that you could do with your bacon and this is just really mild we're not even going to taste smoke because it was from the inside the smoke's only on the surface mm -hmm. But that's as close as to that almond flavor mm. Mm. as you can get. Super mild. I mean, no salt at all. That's really wonderful. And it opens up as you're chewing it. Yeah. So layers of... So all flavor. that to say, just don't, don't fuss about co overcooking this. Really, really don't. Yeah. Don't, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no reason to overcook this. Yeah. It'll only, it'll only diminish your enjoyment of it. Um, so they're getting... Roughly four slabs of that, sliced and frozen in portions. And then but two slabs of belly. 
That's that's the belly bacon. Okay. And that's more that you'll recognize that. That's yeah. the more familiar look of bacon. And mm -hmm. that's all going to be streaky, sliced. Streakies. Yeah. Yeah. And it may be, you know, as I as I slice this. In my family, this is beautiful on each slice. We're totally cool with this. Uh -huh. But I might come in here and along yeah. the natural seam and remove about that much from each slice. But I'm going to wrap it and give it to you. So you're going to get smoked, mm -hmm. salty bacon back fat. Bacon back fat, That yeah. you can then util utilize just like lardo, you know, or the salona. Um, mm -hmm. Eat it raw or cook or, it or, or the guanciale, whatever. right. Or the guanciale, mm -hmm. right. Which let's talk about next. Okay, so this guanciale. Yours are, are a little thicker than this. You're going... How do I... I get... What? <laughs> thicker? Yours are a little <laughs> thicker because your pigs are a little fatter. These are ours. This is ours? Yeah. But it's this. This is triangular doodly bob, which is the jowl of a pig. And cured just like bacon, only not smoked or just like half a day of smoke. Mm -hmm. Um, this is your cooking medium. So this should forever, if, if you're ever tempted to pour oil into a skillet, uh, don't. Olive oil is okay, you know, but just, you know, even then, like there's only a few times when it actually cooks, fry something in olive oil, especially good olive oil. But this, you, you just cut off a thickish slice, you know, right down to the skin. Cube it up and let it melt in your pan. And that is the medium for all the things. Brown your steaks in it. And it's going to melt this wonderful jowl fat, which is very special. You can also slice it thin and just eat it raw. Serve mm -hmm. it raw. It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so this is not going to be frozen. That's the thing I was trying to remember to say. This is going to be like this. Cured and good at room temperature until the end of the cosmos or you eat it. Mm -hmm. Whichever comes first. So this should hang in your kitchen. It'll be beautiful. And you can pull it down, cut off a piece, use it, and just hang it back up. You don't need to do anything to the surface from which you have, that you have exposed and from which you have removed that slice. Um, this is meat as a garnish, as a flavoring, you know, that you add to anything or as the, the oily medium in which you the cook base, anything. The base for, um, what's the Italian tradition? Oh, carbonara. Pasta, pasta carbonara. carbonara. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That that's this is the traditional base that you would use yeah. for the guanciale. Similar to pancetta. If you've heard recipes for pancetta, guanciale works just mm -hmm. as well. It's um, like a sweet, unsmoky bacon yeah. texture. And it's a very dense fat. It has lots of collagen in it. Right. Uh, because that's right where their jaw is that they use all the mm -hmm. time. And so it, it doesn't shrink very much, if at all. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a really unique texture. Mm -hmm. It's cured exactly the same as bacon, but the, mm -hmm. the difference between it and bacon is purely its physiology, mm -hmm. just because of what it does. Right. Guanciale means pillow, because that's the jowl that the pig mm -hmm. goes to sleep on mm -hmm. every night. Um, <laughs> the other thing you're going to get, while we're talking about things that are not frozen, but cured until the end of the cosmos, is uh, copa. This is copa. This is our copa. This is from a Gloucester Old Spot pigs. Your pigs are a little bigger, so they're going to be a slightly larger mm -hmm. circumference there. Um, this one is from December, and we're in March. Can we? February, March. So this is a little young, but I already cut into it mm -hmm. because it's delicious. Um, but so what you want to do with your copa is just hang it in your kitchen. And, you know, I think... If we're going to be official about it, which you can't really be, there's too much variability, but you could let it hang there for six months before you cut into it. But it's totally up to you. Like I said, this is three months and I'm loving it. And our boys love it. Yeah. They're all over it. That's why I haven't brought it into the house yet because if I bring it into the house, it's gone in like yeah. a day. Uh, but this, you know, I'm, you can see I don't have a nice, perfectly flat edge. I don't use a meat slicer. I just use a sharp knife and you just want to slice off little little pieces of it yours is wrapped in uh uh i i rolled pepper black pepper on it which uh tastes really nice mm. and this is just okay. from december and it's really it's really good this is a snack mm. again a good part of your um charcuterie this board. kind of satisfies my my desire for salami Yes. Even though it's not salami, and we haven't ventured into including that in our pork share yet, yeah, it um, it's a stand-in 
I don't know if it's the pepper. It a is a little the pepper. bit the texture, the the fat mm -hmm. profile. Yeah, it has it do that? a low pH. So it has okay. a little bit of that sourly pleasant yes. flavor. Mm -hmm. Um and the pepper, I think, is the prime agent of that. That's really nice. Yeah, it's really delicious. Mm -hmm. Be great on a sandwich. Mm -hmm. And this will hang in your kitchen like the guanciale. So um, all of this stuff will, will hang in normal ambient temperatures. Yeah. Yeah. One of those. Okay. They're big. They're like, yeah. they're like this big. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Ah, like um, uh, yeah. You get two of these. Two of these. This is a smoked hawk. This is also from our pig. And yours are going to be frozen. Um, this one has been hanging in my shop since December. That's why it's got mold all over it. But basically, it's been brined and cold smoked. So it's raw. This is uh, something that you would braise. It's very tough. And this is the shin or the shank of the pig. And um, what we do... <clears throat> Some pretty water. much <laughs> with <that> pepper. <laughs> pretty much with every hawk we've ever cured is a pot o beans. You're gonna want to do a pot of beans. Um, you could also just braise it with stock and and root vegetables. That would be sweet root vegetables with a salty smoking pork is kind of awesome. But we just get dry beans, put it in the pot with stock and or water to top it up, whatever you need, and then you know a, a smoky salty pork hock in the middle of the bean pot and then just simmer away. Mm -hmm. um, that's your pork hock. I, I love those for utilitarian purposes. Yeah. I, they're an easy, you know, for a house, for a homemaker. I, um, I like to just have it in the pot of beans, pour in my liquid, my fat, and just walk away. And yeah. then you, walk, you return and, you know, you've already done all the hard work in making that delicious. So that's yeah. going to make my my dish delicious mm -hmm. so I don't have to give it much thought anymore it's already I just or I trust that this this pot of beans or soup even yeah. is gonna stand out and it's gonna please everyone from little kids to yeah you know culinary experts so and there is something about the skin smoky salty skin of a pig and beans mm -hmm. there's something cosmically harmonious about them well and i was gonna say too actually it reminds me <clears throat> with the guanciale and all of the back fat and right the bacon fat or just bacon yeah all the streaky bacon that you're getting you're gonna sl well we're gonna do all the slicing for you um but we're also gonna package the uh the the, the skin we're not we don't waste no. anything so you're getting the skin it'll be labeled as bacon rind bacon rind right and that can go in your pot of beans too and, right. and flavor it so. or any braise it, beans is particularly useful you lay it fat side down in the bottom of the pot put the beans in there stock hock okay maybe a little bit of beans hock more beans right stock <laughs> yeah bury the hock beer yeah. yeah but with that skin on the bottom it really is just a one little safeguard against you know the burning of the beans which is so bad it's so bad i get my pot really quick that i use to cook yeah the hock in. and the bacon rind remember it's salty and smoky and it's as hard as leather so it is think of it as a flavor strip that you put in any braise so if you're braising beef anything you do in your crock pot throw a strip or a square oh. or a chunk of bacon rind in there mm -hmm. you is, don't even have to eat it it'll just be awesome this is the pot that i use for for my bread too but my pot of beans whenever i have a hawk yeah just a big dutch oven this used to be red <laughs> <laughs> but he's thrown it in the fire quite a few times yeah <laughs> enamel cast iron big pot yeah yeah um the ham the let's ham. talk about the ham ham -a ding dong so this it's all is wrapped up. yeah, this is unique. This is from a share here. This one is eight pounds. It's a big ham, you know, like shot put size for junior varsity high school boys. Um, <laughs> this is shonka is the Hungarian. I don't know how to say it. Shonka is the Hungarian word for ham. Um, this one is raw and smoked, which means it's been brined and then I cold smoked it. So it's got that wonderful alder flavor and the salty hammy flavor. And there's no bone in this, and it's kind of large. And so this is uh, for a special event. But that's not all that it applies to because 
part of the reason that you make this is because of the leftovers. So how do you cook a raw smoked ham? Which means it's been brined and cold smoked, but never cooked. You want to take it out of your freezer and put it in your fridge and let it slowly thaw. And then um, the cooking is to put it in your biggest pot because that's probably what it's going to take to to hold this thing and simmer away. And it's going to take, you know, um, a ham this size, probably over an hour, an hour and 40 minutes maybe of simmering. And basically you're doing two things in the simmer. You're cooking it and you're also removing some salt. You're cutting the salty edge a little bit. It's still going to taste like ham. It's still going to have a wonderful salt flavor. It's just not going to smack you in the face with salt. And so that's what the simmer does. And simmer it until, if you want to use a thermometer, a temperature doodle, you can you know, simmer it until it's 137, 140 degrees internal temperature. Take it out of the, uh, the, the simmering pot. And then <clears throat> put it on a roasting tray. And this has a net on it and skin and you don't have to but to kind of facilitate the spreading of the yummy tangy sweet glaze that you're gonna put on it just cut the net off pull it off and then cut the skin off and then just smother it in um, honey and mustard mm -hmm. roughly equal parts mm -hmm. or something I don't know I don't even count just mix them in a cereal bowl and then sm smother mm -hmm. them on there and then blast it in an oven for about 20, 25 minutes. And if you want to be really fancy, you'll make kind of a lot of the honey and the mustard. And every eight minutes or so, you'll, you'll, you'll pull the ham out really quick and you'll douse it again with honey and mustard. So you have several layers. Um, when during... he says blast, he means like 450 oh, or something. Oh, right. Yeah, 425, 450. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe 420. I would keep it a little okay. low because it's easy to burn the honey. Okay. Um, and we don't quite want to do that. And you're, you're glazing it. You're putting a honey mustard glaze on it. Mm -hmm. And then take it out of the oven, let it rest for 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. People Long forget time. that stage, but that's Yeah, you've got to let it rest. Whoops, I'm touching <laughs> that's things. That's okay. And that enhances the moisture. The moisture retention. Really yep, in. Yeah. big time. And then you, you, it's boneless, so you can just slice. However seems fit to you, just slice away and that's serve. That's convenient. Yeah, nice. so serve everyone a, a, a thickish slice of ham. And... Um, then you're probably not going to finish all of it because it is eight pounds. Maybe you will, and that's awesome. But if you don't, put what remains into your fridge on a plate. And, um, you know, you can put a kitchen cloth over it, but don't wrap it or anything. And it will keep for well over a week in there. Long, long time. Mm -hmm. It'll keep. Um, and that's your cold cut ham. So the next day and the next day and the next day, you come in and you pull it out and you slice some pieces off. And you can fry them again to brown the slices for breakfast ham. Mm -hmm. This is really the, it's such a good way to eat ham. We love doing it this way. Um, so it's, it's many, many weeks of leftovers just pulling it from your fridge. And because it's been brined and smoked and boiled and blasted, <laughs> it is incredible. It just keeps so well in your fridge. Very long yeah. time, leftovers. In fact, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So that's what you should do. With your brine, mm -hmm. shonka, mm -hmm. your ham. You get one of those. You get one of those. Let's talk about this really quick. Okay, this is leaf lard. You have a lot of this. You have about four of those. Four quarts. That would be a gallon of leaf lard. From a half a pig. Right, just so y'all know <laughs> how many quarts are in a gallon. Because that's specialized knowledge that only we professional. <laughs> anyway, uh, leaf fat, leaf lard. So this is the internal body fat of the pig that has been ground and gently rendered by me and packaged for you. So this is the original shortening. This is... This is extremely expensive if you get it yeah. elsewhere. Or impossible to find. I yeah. would say mangalita late lard finished on hazelnuts is... White gold. Objectively impossible to find. <laughs> Cannot find it. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. We have it. Yeah. And you will have it soon. And it is... Um, it's the original shortening. So this should forever replace Crisco or any recipe that calls for shortening, particularly mm -hmm. the recipes for crust, pie crust, sweet crust. You can cut, you know, usually 50-50 this and butter, but this is so mild that you could do 100% of uh, leaf lard in your pie mm -hmm. crust recipe or instead I've of been, butter. Yeah, biscuits, if you're doing biscuits. Oh my um, gosh, Yorkshire pudding. Cornbread. Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
donuts. Yeah. Fry your donuts in it. Oh, please do. Yeah. yeah. So there's, and the sky's the limit. Yeah. And these are all going to be frozen <clears throat> just for convenience for you. They don't actually need to be. They're incredibly keep. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, pull a quart of it out of your freezer and you could just put it on your counter and uh, mm -hmm. it'll thaw eventually. And then it's, it's really not going to go bad on you. Ours just lives on our counter. We have little buckets of fat all over our kitchen and it's all fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also just use that as a general cooking oil, mm -hmm. just like a spoon pretty much lives in ours. Mm -hmm. And we just fry eggs in it or braise vegetables anytime you need to grease the pan, oil the pan. Um, the leaf lard yeah. is a super luxurious way to do that. So this should forever replace canola oil or hydrogenated vegetable mm -hmm. shortening forever. Or grapeseed oil, things that you flash fry things in. Yes, right. High frying, Coconut oil. quick browning. Right. That's the leaf lard. I mean, I'm a fan of some of those things for their own right, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the head cheese, the brawn. You will have two loaves of head cheese and it is frozen for you. And basically it's chunks of head that have been meticulously cleaned of all their hairs and slowly cooked and cubed and then set in a redu in their reduced um, cooking liquid, which mm -hmm. is a really rich stock. It's almost like a demi-glace. If you look up demi-glace, it's like distilled uh, meat liquor. It is super dense, meat super syrup. flavorful. Syrup. It's like, mm -hmm. it's syrup. Yeah, it's very dense stock is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I find the most enjoyable way that we eat it and the most useful manifestation it takes in our family kitchen is um, as we'll just pull out a package. It's like pre-braised meat. Mm -hmm. It's it's pre-cooked mm -hmm. head meat, pre-braised meat. Mm -hmm. You're not going to notice, you know, uh, that, oh, this is from the head of a pig. You're just going to notice that it is delicious, succulent cubes of fat with a little bit of skin on it that is very tender and fall apart which is a word, apparently. And... You Eat it up, pour it over rice. Or yeah, yeah. Polenta. That's how we use it as a braise. Mm -hmm. Just put it in a pan, melt it. Mm -hmm. You can even, you know, maybe crank up the heat to brown the pieces a little bit, really reduce the liquid, and then just pour it over plain rice. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible. It's incredibly flavorful. Yeah. Um, if you're really gentle about the way you thaw it out, because the gelatin is really delicate, which is the thing that makes it stay in a solid brick form, you could... Um, I would try to roll it out of the plastic before it's completely thawed and then you'll be able to kind of slice mm -hmm. it, which is what you see normally for fromage de tete. Uh, ours mm -hmm. is labeled brawn, by the mm -hmm. way. Yours will say brawn mm -hmm. because that's the English word. Mm -hmm. Apparently we okay. do have an English word for okay. yeah, uh, head meat suspended or any kind of meat that is slow cooked suspended mm -hmm. in uh, unctuous demi -glaze. Sounds a little more palatable to some people than head cheese. Maybe, yeah. Especially <laughs> since head cheese makes no physiological yeah, sense. Yeah. There's no cheese. Okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah, if you thaw it slowly, you might be able to slice it and serve it with like mustard, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or pickle. But really, we really, we use it as a pre-made braise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With an unctuous, it's, like it's a ready-made sauce. Mm -hmm. the, the, the stock is so reduced that it is very sauce-like. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could dash a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a little bit of wine, and then finish it with a little bit of butter just to thicken it at the end. Yeah, I'll show you how much you're getting of that. But that is how we utilized the each half share is, is actually truly a half pig. Um, each share is truly a half pig, which means it's a half head. So you get two of those, which accounts nice. for half the meat on a head, and then also the broth that the head meat contributed all of its virtue to mm -hmm. is in those little cubes. Um, the last thing is sausage. Sausage. This is a sausage. And this sausage has very traditional ingredients, and it's really delicious. Um, it's uh, coarse ground. I ground it on a coarse setting, so it's a, it's more of a chunky. It's not on the side of hot dog. It's not heavily emulsified at all. It's a chunky sausage, and it has uh, smoked paprika and some wonderfully dried peppers that were grown by friends here on Vashon, and the fresh, as in not sitting in a storehouse forever, but not fresh from the plant. <laughs> 
because they've been dried. But those peppers really, I mean, you haven't really tasted paprika until you've had, I don't know, the real thing. This, sometimes the powder paprika sits around in storehouses for so long, gets oxidized, and it's not very tasty. Mm -hmm. But I found a source of really fine smoked paprika, and it makes all the difference. And then I've added these beautiful peppers grown on Vashon that have been dried. And Can we try a taste? It's super delicious. Yeah, and we've been frying up some here. Oh, man. Yeah, and it's got some, you can't really see it, can you? It's got some, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's got little fat chunks in there, right? As it ought. Mmm. Really delicious. That can stand on its own mm -hmm. or be added to something. I mean, that would be really good on a nice brioche bun. Oh, yeah. Some sauerkraut. Mm, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I'm going German here, but that works. Um, I don't know. That's really good. And mustard, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pasta sauce. I feel like we end up frying up a mm -hmm. bunch of them and then cutting them and throwing them in mm -hmm. pasta. They're very versatile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or in a frittata for breakfast, or just enough paprika, but it doesn't overtake it. Yeah. yeah. I was really careful not to overdo the right. paprika because you were. I do not like that. <laughs> and the trick is, you need to be able to eat this for a long time and love it more and more. Which means you can't have more, and why too is much that? of one spice. The reason for that is you have almost 30 pounds of it. So 20 what to is 30, that? depending on how big. Mm -hmm. It's like 75 to 100 links. So you kind of have a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, that and it's kind awesome. Of, yeah, so that wraps it up. So that far box in the back, that's full of sausage. Yeah. And then this uh, this other <clears throat> bin, can you pull out like one of the stock? You get, you get three giant... <clears throat> wrapped parcels of stock bones for your own stock making enjoyment three or thereabouts yeah two it's or all three. it's it's the stock bones from one side from all the sausage yeah. that we made and then two of the brawn bricks <laughs> and uh two the two hawks are in there mm -hmm. and um the tenderloins in there the back fat spread and that's more or less it yeah and then all the bacon's going to be added to that all the bacon sliced basically going to create another whole at least you know two-thirds of a box because mm -hmm. we don't have all the bacon out that you'll be getting yeah but then all estimate, the rest of these yeah. items so it's like three to three and a half very full boxes yeah of meat um and that wraps it up <laughs> this is sort of this was fun that was, that was delicious. It was really decadent. So if you're watching this and you're interested in our pork shares, please head to farmsteadmeatsmith.com backslash pork dash shares, I believe. Wow, You could look one. it up. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on our website. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and, and let us know if you're interested in, in a share. Um, if you're already getting one, then I hope this makes you even more excited about what you're getting. Mm -hmm. um, and we also, we also sell regular pork shares <laughs> <laughs> which are not regular at all they're very no. similar to this yeah. they're from the old spots that we raise they're um they're much more well we only have two and a half acres and we don't have time to raise 18 month old animals mm -hmm. so the 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 gloucester old spots get to a good size at six to eight months mm -hmm. and but we do the lard and the bacon and um there's some some slight differences and the, yeah but, there's more fresh cuts those would, yes you would have yeah. chops for example right so yeah. we're really seasonal um yeah. too and you know part of the reason why we did this is not only because it's a mangalitsa but the back bacon and the regular bacon yeah is in the winter we you have to cure things yeah um and we so. like to butcher animals with a regard for their physiology yeah and be docile to their yield mm -hmm. rather than force what they give us force the harvest into our pre-packaged boneless skinless cube shaped Mm -hmm. idea of what meat should be and so this these mangalitsas are a lard pig mm -hmm. that is the point mm -hmm. and that has got to be the starting position for the harvest mm -hmm. and if you allow if you allow yourself to be docile to that rather than saying you know well what do i like from a pig but rather what is the pig going to produce for me mm -hmm. then it really changes the yield for the better 
That's the crazy thing. Mm -hmm. There was zero trim from these pigs. So you're really getting yeah. a whole side and it's These are it's really knock your socks unique. Off. We've never found anything like this in our country at least. Um, and we don't deny that it's it's demanding a little bit of the consumer to mm -hmm. to adjust to maybe what they're used to. Actually some of them might even they might recognize this from their childhood. Yeah. And right. that's great. Mm -hmm. Um and for some people there's a learning curve and they they, they usually love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the cool thing about the Mangalitsa is that this is the gentlest way to learn how to eat fat because mm -hmm. I have never tasted fat that is this mild. That's true. It is. Yeah. It's really very gentle. It's not, uh, mm -hmm. it's not a huge course in a, it's not like, you're not going to feel like you're going on a ketogenic diet and mm -hmm. really severely limiting yourself to just eating solid pork mm -hmm. fat. Mm -hmm. It's so mild. It is. Yeah. It's edible in a way that you've never experienced from other. Yeah. Yeah. Pork. And we're hoping to keep doing this. So mm -hmm. we've got a farmer in um, Oregon who is uh, providing these for us. We've got, we ran through six already. Mm -hmm. he, we're probably going to do another three or so. And then he's got a whole nother round in July and he's got a breeding stock. So, you know, and he's looking for the market and we've, yeah. um, we've got a growing market for this. So, which hopefully can include you if you're watching this and you're interested. And um, thanks so much for watching. We hope you've learned. A little bit, I have. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, Brian, for running that down. Oh, and if you are getting a pork share, we are now your butchers. So keep in touch with us and send us your questions. You know, I'm hanging this and I see some mold here. Or, mm -hmm. you know, tell me again how I can cook up this one product. And mm -hmm. anyway, we're, we're your butchers. We want to we continue that relationship and answer your culinary questions. Make sure you're getting good use of all this. So, um, yeah, do you have any more Anything else to add? No, yeah, I think that's great. Just uh, where the rubber really meets the road is in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so I did the easy part, even though it's kind of physically demanding to you know, do the slaughter and, and the farmer, Chris, raising them, that was tough. Butchering them, curing them properly. <laughs> rebuilding our smokehouse rebuilding twice. Rebuilding the smokehouse In the whole middle of the process. During the smoking, yeah. <laughs> but really where the rubber meets the road with the harvest is in your kitchen. Uh-huh. Can you incorporate this into the uh, the management of your kitchen and the yeah. feeding of your people? Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, then that vindicates the harvest. Mm -hmm. That that makes it all worth it. And that's really the thing that makes sustainable agriculture regenerative and actually sustainable. Mm -hmm. If you like mm -hmm. its yield. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is made the yield transparent. So mm -hmm. like this is this is an undiluted lard pig. And uh, and hopefully there doesn't have yeah. to be too much work involved in the kitchen because we've let things kind of just be what they are. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And again, it's so the fat is of such a high quality. The flavor is so good that it's if you don't have to prepare it in complex ways. That's the magic of this. So stick with simplicity few good ingredients mm -hmm. rather than many complex mm -hmm. less quality ingredients that's that's really where the you will experience the efficiency of this mm -hmm. and the practical gain and even the time saving mm -hmm. in your own kitchen is that it requires less to make something delicious yeah that's what i'm trying to say yeah yeah i agree i think we can end there <laughs> okay thanks so much for joining us I'll talk to you soon bye bye bye